Um, I'll start with a confession. My background is computer science, so I know very little about plants and plant biology. So I hope you forgive me crashing your session um, and still enjoy my talk. Uh, but uh, let's get started. So yeah, um, as was mentioned, you know, we were recently able to finish the human genome. Um, and we added about 10%, almost 10% of sequence that was, had been missing uh, in the previous reference. And as much as this project was a celebration of the algorithm development and improved analysis that we were able to do, it was also a celebration of the sequencing advances over the past 20 years, namely the power of combining both uh, a highly accurate like Q30 plus data type uh, and the ultra long uh, hundreds of KB uh, data type together to get the best of both worlds, uh, which at the time we did with HiFi and ultra long ONT data. But you know, the obvious follow-on question to that is, that's nice, but I don't want to buy two different sequencing instruments, so could we do this with just one instrument? Um, and we set out to answer this question. Luckily for us, uh, ONT recently released this duplex sequencing. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in detail on this, because Clive did a nice intro for me yesterday uh, in, in the evening. I hope you attended that talk. Um, I'll just say that you know, a lot of the things that I was going to say actually might be even outdated at this point. Uh, like the two cons I had on the slide was the relatively lower throughput and the computational expense, uh, but it sounds like both of those have been addressed for the latest releases uh, of Dorado uh, and of the new flow cells. Uh, but just to give you a sense of the real world performance of duplex, um, this is, it's been rapidly improving. Um, there were 15 human uh, cells that we ran, uh, actually our collaborators at UCSC ran, uh, starting in 2022 to early 2023, using various uh, iterations of this duplex uh, chemistry as it was being released. Um, so one first thing uh, that you can see on this graph is we were getting about a consistent 50 plus percent duplex rate, and that's what we expected for these uh, cells at the time. Um, the throughput uh, was more variable. You can see that the last three cells really took off. Uh, and these were the, uh, these high yield um, duplex cells that came out uh, in early 2023. Uh, and so you can see that the earlier cells were getting maybe like five gigs per cell. And then uh, by the end, early uh, 2023, we were getting 20 consistently, 20 gigabases to 25 gigabases of duplex data uh, per cell, right? So that's quite an increase from three to 20 gigs. Um, when we actually take a look at this data, uh, this is data for tomato generated by KeyGene. Um, so the first, uh, plot here, the simplex data in orange. Um, you can see it's about Q20, uh, a little bit lower. That's what we expect for simplex data, uh, right? So nothing too surprising here. Um, the dashed line in all three plots is Q30, 99.9%. Um, and so um, this is also a, a kind of a distribution heat map. So the darkest part is where half the reads are. And then the most pale part is encompassing 99% of your read distribution. Um, and the axis on the, the y-axis there is the read length um, in kilobases, right? And so you can see that the simplex reads span a wide range of lengths, like we've come to expect. There are 100 plus KB reads here. Um, they're obviously not the majority of the reads, but there's enough of them to show up in this uh, histogram quite clearly. Um, then in the green, we can see the duplex reads. You can see that they are indeed modalities about Q30. Um, they also span a wide range of lengths. Um, so, you know, there's 50 KB reads, there's a good amount of between 50 and 100 KB, and the longest ones, again, like the simplex, go out to over 100 KB. Um, and then the last one in blue uh, are the hi-fi reads for comparison. Um, and so what you can see on the hi-fi, in contrast, is that they're obviously much shorter because there's a size selection process there where we're trying to get only 20 kilobase reads. Uh, but then there's this kind of um, shoulder on one side, so if you are like a 30 or 40 KB read, you're much more likely to be on the lower quality side than the high quality side of that dashed line. And that's because um, there's a minimum number of read passes you need to get to a certain quality with the uh, hi-fi data, right? And so if you're a longer read, you're less likely to get that number of passes, and so you're less likely to be uh, as the same quality. Uh, we don't see that kind of trend in the, in the duplex data uh, because it's, it's not length dependent. Um, and like I said, there are some extremely long reads. So this is cherry picking a bit, obviously, or tomato picking. Um, but if our longest read that we went uh, and looked for happens to be here on chromosome 5, this is a 200 KB region of the chromosome. And that one highlighted read in red uh, is 187 KB Q30 read, right? Um, and so uh, this IGV plot is filtered in the same way. It filters indels less than four uh, bases. And that's only to make the simplex uh, visible. Otherwise, the simplex plot on the bottom, very bottom there, would be just all blue indels. 
Um, but to give you a comparison and sense, you can see that the hi-fi data and the duplex data is quite similar. Um, there's very little difference from this reference. All the reads look really high quality, uh, but you can see that the duplex data is, on average, the reads are much longer um, than they are in the hi-fi data set. Right? So what happens if we take this data set and we try to assemble it? Uh, this is done with our assembler Virco that you've already heard about. Um, so it starts with the high quality duplex data and then layers the ultra long on top. Um, if you've never looked at bandage plots before, uh, all these squiggly lines are essentially contigs, and the numbers of them are the assignment uh, to a chromosome based on the reference uh, of tomato, right? So this is good to see. We see that most of them are simple lines, and each line has one number. Um, so we see that you know many chromosomes, like 7, 10 on the bottom there, um, just one single line. So these are probably telomere to telomere. There's nothing left that's ambiguous. The ones that are ambiguous, like chromosome 8, for example, here, um, or nine have just like one small region where there's some remaining heterozygosity where you know this is almost uh, completely um, a homozygous uh, tomato line, but there's still some variation left. And so we can see that in the graph, but that's not a big deal to resolve. So if we, so um, I should say this is about um, 30x of duplex matched to 30x of hi-fi. Um, this represented high, uh, three uh, uh, duplex cells compared to uh, uh, about half of a sequel to E cells, but obviously the yields have changed for both decks. Um, so if we compare them in terms of base quality, this is using HiFi as the baseline. So we're checking KMERS in the HiFi data, and are there any KMERS from HiFi data that are not in the assembly, uh, that are in the assembly that are not in the HiFi data, so essentially errors in the assembly. Uh, and you can see that the QV for both is over 50, so this is quite good. Um, the HiFi assembly is a little bit higher, uh, but you know the, the ONT certainly is still very high quality. Um, and when we start to measure T2T con uh, contigs here, we see that we have five chromosomes out of the 12 in tomato automatically complete uh, versus three in the HiFi data. So we think this is because of the higher length um, that we have in this duplex data. Um, and you may say, like, well, wait a minute, you know, you're saying that there's more, but if I look at the plot, there's like, there's a bunch of chromosomes there that I've circled uh, in the HiFi data that look like they're complete and linear. There's nothing missing. Why am I not calling them T2T? And what we found is if you look at the example of 11 and 12, which look nicely disconnected and resolved in the PAC bio um, hi fi side, they're actually connected on the very end on uh, the uh, duplex side. And what we found is there's some subtelomeric repeats that are dropping out in the hi fi data that are being sequenced by the duplex. Uh, and so in this case, uh, there's no telomere there, you're just missing the end of the chromosome. And uh, with the hi fi data, you would have to go work very hard to try to get into that region because it's a small region that's missing is just kind of lost. Um, and so we saw this uh, commonly happening at the ends of the chromosome, which is why um, you know, 5 and 12 and 11 there that look like a line are not actually complete uh, in the, in the PAC bio data. Uh, to be fair, we've also seen the opposite where there are some uh, regions that drop out in the duplex data um, as well that uh, HiFi might get through. Right, so just to put this in context, the current best tomato reference, uh, this SL5, which is based on PagBio HiFi, um, you know, has about 70 contigs. Here are the stats for it. Um, then we did uh, two Virco assemblies. The first one, the automated one, push button that came out, that was the one I showed you in the graph. Uh, you can see we already brought that down to 22 contigs. So there's 12 chromosomes here. So we're almost to chromosome level already with just a push of a button. Um, and then we did a little bit of manual processing. Uh, essentially, it was resolving those heterozygosity, and we did have one gap where there was a really big um, uh, sequence missing in the duplex data, uh, which we had to patch with the ultralong data, but it was longer than a single ultralong read uh, that we had, so we had to do a little sub-assembly there. Um, but these are kind of minor things, right? Um, we resolved the chloroplast, the mitochondria, and the consensus of our DNA. Um, and so the only thing we have left, so now we have these 14 contigs, that's all the 12 chromosomes plus the mito and the chloroplast. Um, the only remaining gap is this chromosome 2 RDNA array, uh, which is that big tangle in the graph on the previous slide. Uh, but um, that, you know, we have a consensus unit we can put in in the right number of copies. That's kind of a, our standard for T to T for our DNA for now. Um, and we can also improve the QV using a deep consensus from uh, Google to over 56, so 57, almost U60, for the same assembly. So we're not topping out how well we can do uh, with a duplex data yet. Um, and so just to wrap up, uh, we did also do the maze genome. This one is not. Um, I mean, this one also looks quite good. Um, you can see, again, the chromosomes are mostly in a single piece with just a little bit of heterozygosity remaining that's not resolved. Uh, but again, you know, we only see one 
chromosome per uh, cluster there. Um, this one is a little bit uh, less T to T. Uh, we have a couple of chromosomes. You can see like two and four are in multiple pieces and one. So the, we, we have about um, six gaps remaining here. Uh, uh, it, six of the 10 chromosomes are T to T. Uh, but the public reference, again, uh, that used HiFi has 700 gaps. So again, with push button, you're, you're way, way above that. Um, so we have just uh, a few handful of gaps. Um, so we're, we're still working on that and hope to have a T to T shortly. Um, and with that, I'll just wrap up and say, you know, ONT duplex seems to be a drop in replacement uh, for HiFi in our hands. We have similar coverage recommendations of 20 to 25 per haplotype. Um, both the technologies have their own drawbacks right now. Hi-Fi reads are shorter, but they seem to be more robust um, in production. Uh, duplex is more variable run-to-run, -run, but obviously the reads are much longer. Um, and both have their own kind of dropouts, depending on context. So that's rapidly evolving, and I know ONT. I'm really curious to test the new cells that are coming out now, because a lot of those might have been addressed, and I, I want to see what happens with those. Um, and the last note I'll leave you with is that even though the graphs look beautiful and the assemblies are you know, way, way better than what we could generate before, um, always validate your assembly. One of the best ways to do that is just align your data back to it. And so I don't need to teach you anything about assembly validation or, or mapping. You can just look at that by eye and see that something's wrong at the end of that chromosome, right? Any sequence that you probably, where the coverage is all even and then jumps to you know, way too high, um, there's something wrong there. So don't trust any assembly that's in that region, right? Um, so with that, I'll stop.